Hello and welcome to the Monday, December 16th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's amazing how attackers are creative in finding different file formats to abuse. The last one is something that DA came across and that's AutoCAD files. Have seen this a couple times, AutoCAD drawings. The extension is typically .dwg. They have the ability to include Visual Basics for applications or VBA macros. So a lot of the dangers that are typically associated with Microsoft Office files also translate to AutoCAD. Now, you may say, sure, uh, AutoCAD, uh, certainly interesting, but who's actually using it? Well, if you think about many organizations, the people that are using AutoCAD are dealing with current product development and such, so really are kind of on the top of the target list of some of the more targeted exploits. You probably won't see a lot of sort of commodity malware with AutoCAD files, but uh, yes, targeted attacks, certainly a topic here that you should be aware of. Now, kind of interesting about uh, DDA's file here is that it probably won't work the way it was written. According to DDA, the method being used here, like these auto open commands, don't really work in current versions of AutoCAD. In newer versions of AutoCAD, you actually need to associate the subroutine with a ACAD document event. Now, DDA was looking at VirusTotal for similar uh, documents and found them a few years back. So this is something that certainly has been ongoing. I haven't seen a lot being written about it. I only sort of vaguely remember one similar story this year. And Didier considers the document that he came across really more sort of an experiment uh, to essentially for an malware author to see where they are getting uh, with uh, this kind of attack. It looks like Qualys is currently taking a closer look at OpenBSD. Of course, a couple weeks ago, Qualys came up with a number of pretty embarrassing kind of security vulnerabilities in OpenBSD. The new one that they found late last week isn't really any less dangerous in the sense that it does allow a normal user to escalate privileges to root pretty easily. The problem here is an insecure library path where essentially a user can trick a binary into loading their library instead of the official library. Now what nix this verse is this, that is that the ch pass utility that's the utility used to sort of change password information is exploitable now everybody can run ch pass it runs with set to uid root and typically as a normal user i can only update my own information but because it runs as root if the user can now trick this binary into loading a library that the user created then well uh, the user can essentially do whatever the root user can do and well in this case just uh, elevate the user privileges to root. A patch is available, but there is also a proof of concept available. It's actually pretty straightforward to exploit this because it's really more of a permission issue. No buffer overflow, so no fancy pointers and stuff like this required in order to run the exploit. And talking about vulnerabilities that are not all that difficult to exploit, we also have a vulnerability in NPM and Yarn. The problem here is a directory traversal vulnerability. And the way this could be exploited is that if an administrator installs a malicious package, and yes, you know, of course, we have had this happen, this package could override files in user local bin. All it takes is a crafted package.json file, which lists the files to be installed. And well, uh, because NPM doesn't properly normalize the dot dots and such in paths, it's possible to install files in user local bin. 
Only this one particular directory is vulnerable, but then again, it is often in a user's path. So installing somewhat there is certainly a problem. Well, and that's it for today. Just a little bit about the schedule for the holiday weeks that are coming up. So this week, you should still get your normal five podcasts for each workday. Next week and the week after that, we have Christmas Day on Wednesday as well as New Year's Day the Wednesday after. I'm planning on having at least a podcast on Monday of those weeks and probably Thursday and Friday. Friday. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.